but um, we'll do largely the tools for um, English. So um, um, the session uh, I've been told is to um, um, discuss um, uh, whatever online tools we can use to make um, our experiences as a teacher and a student better. So um, before every session, I start with a disclaimer that um, the technology is only to um, aid and technology is not um, really a panacea and given especially the situation of our schools and how much interest we have. Um, and in general also, there's no substitute to um, um, actual reading and writing. And the best way to learn a language is um, always through uh, literature, by reading good stuff, um, by um, reading literary stuff, by um, discussing it, and so on. But um, anyway, so <clears throat> I will uh, focus on all uh, uh, the skills that are required for learning language, which is... Um, um, reading, writing, speaking, using a few tools for each of them. And also because largely um, the tools that are available, uh, the apps that are available are the paid apps. So my focus is to um, look at um, things that are open source and that are free. Um, so that uh, otherwise there's no point talking about uh, these apps because most of them, the premium features are locked and so on and so forth and which we cannot afford. There is no system in place to uh, um, do that for wide dissemination. So my focus is um, um, the free apps and um, the free websites. And largely, um, I look at the portals, not at apps, um, because um, the portals, the websites have a wider range always. Of course, the app versions of most of these things. So let us start. Um, <clears throat> there is this very interesting um, application called Nike. I'll also write it in the chat box, which is completely free. And so <clears throat> Anki or Anki uses um, uh, the flashcard system. And uh, the whole idea is um, learning by repetition. So like we learn with flashcards and repeat the flashcards and so on and so forth. So this would be very useful for um, vocabulary exercises, synonyms, antonyms, remembering book, books and authors, whatever, whatever needs lists. Um, Anki is very useful. So I'll share my screen and let us go through what this tool is. All right. So what you need to do is just go to Google, Google Anki, <clears throat> and uh, it pops up as the first result. And it says Anki powerful intelligent flashcards. <clears throat> that and download, I've already, I've already downloaded it. So what you get eventually is something like this, what you see here, you click on it and you get a very basic, sort of interface over here of okay okay i already have some preloaded things what you will get is a blank as you can see it's a very basic um app basic application in which you can make your own flashcards and um, so what you see um on the header is dex add browse stats sync so which suggests that we can browse on the web and get flashcards. We can sync from the um, um, various websites as well. And there's statistics of how you're doing with it. So it's a very user-friendly and also user-based um, application in which it will show you things, what you're weak at will be repeated again and again. And that's the whole idea of flashcards is to uh, commit to memory what you weak at and um, so as you can see at the bottom there's again hard good easy and all that so let's see how we can use it so once you've downloaded it you will get an interface of this sort we can click on decks i've already downloaded one uh, deck of 4000 english essential words and i created one for synonyms 
but um, let's see how we can download what is already available on net A and B, we'll see how uh, we can create our own flashcards. So A, um, everything can be done from here itself. So for example, get shared. If you go to the website, which is ankiweb.net, and then you go to its um, um, page, which is shared.dex over here. So here, <clears throat> as you can see, there are various which, uh, hyperlinks as well as art, sciences, and trivia. Um, and so there's a lot of um, shared resources, and this is completely open source and free, so we can use all the shared resources that are there. So let's click on English over here in languages. There you go. So we get um, multiple sort of lists over here. All these are lists that will get loaded to your personal Anki and then you practice. So for example, let us, um, there's lots of Chinese stuff also I see over here. For example, let us take um, essential idioms in English. Okay. And here you will see that there are these decks over here, my English and key decks, and we can download any of these over here. <clears throat> So for example, let us just download this thousand basic English words, which it says 960 notes. And let's scroll down. And we find a download tab. So we'll download this. This will go to my download folder um, on the laptop. And from there, we'll import it to. All right, so this is done, it's downloaded. Open file. And this is, I'm um, sorry, the uh, zoom bar is coming over here. We can get just go to Anki back to Anki and uh, then import tab over here. We'll just import it from here. Yes. Right, so it's importing, it will import the entire. So these are the shared folders. And then we close it over here. And as you can see, the basic um, English. Uh, thousand basic English words have popped up over here. So we just go there and it says um, new 20 learning zero to review zero and we do a study now on this. Okay. So first it um, gives you a pronunciation of the word and show answer and come up <clears throat> like this. And with examples as well. <clears throat> So again, you can see if you want to play it again, it will play it again. So as in the next slide. And there are levels. Hard, good, easy. We can, let's say, go to the hard one. In this list, funny is hard. <laughs> and so on. So this is, this is the way um, um, the decks are there. And you can see that the potential of this is tremendous. One can create one's own decks. One can import um, shared decks and so on. Let's try and import one more so that we have more command over how to do these things. Let's go back. Let's try something outside of English over here. <clears throat> Let's wait and take history. Okay. Let's take 
in U.S. presidents with pictures. Yeah. Right, download it. And open the file. <clears throat> and as the previous deck, we import this and then close it. And you'll see the US president has popped up over here. So we we'll go then and study now. Okay. So this is the first president, George Washington. So um, this is hard because it, it merely, I think this is not properly synced. There's a problem with this because it's not giving a hint. So let's try something else. Or let's keep at it. Um, okay, so it's um, by um, um, by chronology, first, second, um, until 20th. <clears throat> so as you can see, the potential for it is huge. One can import various kinds of files that are available online as well as create our so let us try and create our own. So there's an, a tab saying create deck. So let's, for example, take antonyms, okay? Where did it go? Just a second. Here. Yeah. So there's antonyms over here. And what we'll do is that it already creates a deck. We can. So this tab will open up, which says um, so we can create different kinds of decks. We need to work with the basic one. So um, here you can see that there are various kinds that can be uh, done over here basic and reverse card, basic type and answer and image occlusion and so on and so forth. Let's work with the basic. The more you play with it, the more you will learn. Now let us, for example, open up an antonym list and create our own list over here. <clears throat> antonym list image. So, for example, we have this list. Now we have to put this list on our own um, deck. So, we go back. The front will say external. <clears throat> the back of the card will say internal. And then there's an add tab over here. You add, this is added. Wall. Rise. Okay. First, let's do like five. Right, ten. <clears throat> Many. So we have added four or five, and now let us close it. All right. Let's go back to our view and we'll go to the deck tab. And now we see antonyms. This one we just created. Okay. So there are five elements in it. <clears throat> and we do a study now. So external and go to show answer. Internal. Okay. <clears throat> then again, fall. Right, again, fast, slow, again, fat, thin. Yeah. Now, so it will show you. So there's tabs, easy, hard, and good. It will show you according to its, its own gradations and how we use it. So the more you use it, the more you'll be able to learn it. And 
um, you go to stats, it will um, show you how many guides you studied and so on. Okay. Right. So this has a very basic interface and is very useful as a flashcard. The other flash flashcard you would have heard about is Quizlet, which is also um, pretty easy, easy to use, but Quizlet has premium features, whereas Anki is completely free. And you can create your lists as well as import lists from the web, which is in, its, um, in the interface of the app itself. Right. So that was one tool that we learned today. Now let us go to other interesting matters. One of the most um, um, important challenges to um, Indian English speakers is pronunciation of things, because there are so many um, accents all across India that um, um, everybody has a sort of an inflection of, of their regional regional accent wherever they are from, and so um, uh, so somebody's asked me about Hindi usage in the chat. आप इसको इसी app को Hindi में भी इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं. Of course, um, online आपको list नहीं मिलेंगे. लेकिन जो flash card create करने का है, वो तो आप Hindi में type करेंगे. और हिंदी के फ्लैश कार्ड्स बनाएंगे तो उसी प्रकार से बन जाएंगे जैसे कि इंग्लिश में बने सो द प्रॉब्लम विद व्हाट मोस्ट मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टफ ऑन इंटरनेट इज सिंस इंग्लिश इज द स्टैंडर्डाइज्ड स्टैंडर्ड लैंग्वेज नाउ मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टफ विल गेट इन इंग्लिश इज बट दे कैन बी कस्टमाइज्ड द टूल इज अ टूल व्हाटएवर लैंग्वेज व्हाटएवर मटेरियल यू पुट इन लाइक वी कुड पुट इन ज्योग्राफी एंड हिस्ट्री इनटू दैट दोस फ्लैश कार्ड्स एज वेल वो तो बस सीखने की बात है कि um, कैसे किस तरीके से हम उसको um, सीख सकते हैं अनफॉर्चुनेटली द मोस्ट ऑफ द रिसोर्स दैट आई हैव अवेलेबल एंड बीइंग अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश इज आर ऑन आर इन इंग्लिश यू हैव टू इफ यू आर फ्रॉम एनी अदर लैंग्वेज यू हैव टू कस्टमाइज इट use these resources um, in your language to enable yourself okay so one of the most important challenges i was saying as um, um, speakers of indian english is the regional inflection everybody has their own sort of regional uh, accent and so pronunciation learning pronunciation is very important there's nothing like good The wrong pronunciation, but there's a neutral pronunciation that um, we should know of words, and also one of the problems is most of the readers, um, uh, a lot of readers in India, read and learn, um, and they do not have access to um, spoken forms of uh, complicated words or um, um, difficult words. and so they know the um, spellings or the uses of it but they do not know the pronunciation for example it's like the rendezvous french words which are in english and <clears throat> uh, english has a lot of words from a lot of other languages uh, th that is embedded in the history of english itself which we can talk about briefly is that english itself is only about 1000 years old as anybody uh, acquainted with uh, the um, language the history of the language would know it was the norman anglo saxon conquest into england before that um, uh, people of the region spoke different language then there is a whole uh, history of colonization of various continents of india of africa and within europe itself the influence Uh, because of trade, because of wars, all kinds of things, uh, many imported words into English. So especially the French French words like rendezvous, spelt as R E N D Z E O U S, which would for any would be rendezvous. No, but um, uh, so we need to learn pronunciations of these words. And learning pronunciation has very easy tools. Google itself um, um, shows the interface. and google is the most powerful tool actually when doesn't need to go anywhere most of the stuff can be found on google but <clears throat> just google definition 
and um, so that's it actually i'm not using google that is why it's showing different results let's go through google <clears throat> And on Google, just type in definition. And the first search tab that opens up is um, what word do you want to look up? So let us say the word that we were harping on, which is what is it? Okay. Comes up like this. It comes up in both English and Hindi. Hindi is not of use over here for us, but as you can see for Hindi teachers over here, that Google will provide you pronunciation of Hindi words as well. So let's go to English and it's a simple voice tab. And they also do how to learn to pronounce. It breaks it into IPA, the IPA system. So this is the way to pronounce it. Even though the spelling is R-E-N-D-E-Z-V-O-U-S, it's not Rendezvous, it's Rendezvous because it's a French word. It's not an English word originally. You can slow the thing and play it again to learn how it's pronounced and the mouth movements are there. Or you can speed it up and pronounce it as it normally is, right? And as you can see, there are various kinds of things that Google provides. It provides an overview, which is as what is it is as a noun, what it's as a verb, gives you usage examples. You'd become you'd be welcome to use this place as a rendezvous. Edward turned up late for their rendezvous. I rendezvous with the band, Sam's Justin for the moment for lunch at venue. They had a secret rendezvous and so on. So, and I'm um, going to give you similar and opposite words meeting, appointment, engagement, assignation, date, tryst as a verb as well. And pronunciation we have already seen. So, this is a very handy and a very useful tool. <clears throat> to learn how to pronounce words in English. And as you saw, that this works different kinds of languages. It works with various Indian languages and definitely works with um, Hindi as well. Okay. I was just looking at the chats. Um, people are asking Hindi card. We have Anki me, Anki me online to is work nahi hai. Aap banayenge to ye shared resources hote hain. To aap banayenge to baaki logon ko bhi mil jayega. Aur this banana bahut aasan hai, jaise ki maine dikhaya. All right, let's move on. So we have done Anki. We have done um, the Google pronunciation tool. Now, um, usage is one of the important uh, factors as well. There are lots of people who just learn words, phrases from lists, uh, from guidebooks, but do not know really how to use it, where a word has to be used, where a phrase has to be placed, how exactly to use it. Um, and that, and then we end up using it in wrong places. So for this, there's a very interesting and nice website called osdic.com. And the good thing about these websites that I'm telling you is that they're very basic. The interface is very clean um, and whatever you need is right there with a search bar right at the top. Most of these um, things are. So for example, let's continue with Ron Dib. Let's see what Osdick says. So this is a co-location website. Co-location means where um, a word is to be located, how, what is the usage of it. So how a word, a particular word is used as a verb, with a verb, with a proposition and so on and so forth. There are various kinds of usage. Um, and we do not understand 
the usage, a holistic usage of a particular word which we have come across um, because of lack of practice, because of lack of seeing that uh, word in context. So this basically provides you context for anything. So here, rendezvous noun arranged to meet. Okay. How to use a verb with rendezvous? Although it was late, there was still enough time to keep the rendezvous. So here the verb is to keep, to keep the rendezvous, to keep the meeting, to keep uh, what was decided between us. So here the sense is arranged. Uh, next, the sense to make. She made the rendezvous with only minutes to spare. How to use the word rendezvous with make. Similarly, it's with miss. I have a rendezvous with Peter at a restaurant on the harbor. Okay, this is with. <clears throat> the cafe is a popular So we were talking of, uh, now am I audible? There was an internet glitch for a few seconds. So we were talking, um, and so somebody has asked me, uh, Mr. Tarun Kumar Mittal, how this is helpful to create to, uh, content for the students. I believe this is for, Anki. So Anki is, it's very useful for both students and teachers in terms of creating um, uh, flashcards, lists, like I said, and a whole range of possibilities that um, you can use it for antonyms, synonyms, phrases, vocabulary, and so on and so forth. You create and put them online and students can download it on their Anki as well. It's not um, uh, a shared resource like Google Drive is. Um, but the lists that you create are um, shared across the board if you give you if you give the permission. If you tell the students what the uh, title of the particular flashcard series is. Apart from that, you can of course tell them what is already available as resource, um, the number of um, um, lists that are already available online and and that can be used easily. All right, so next I was talking about, Co-location called osdic.com. So co-location is simply, like I said, locating a word, using it. Difficulties that um, Indian users face, they know the words. They don't know how to use it. Of rendezvous over here, let's take um, anything else. Um, that's take um, language, for example. Sorry. So that was Osdic.com. So Osdic.com acts not just as a dictionary, but it tells you how to use a particular word. You don't even need to enter. It immediately picks it up. So it tells you what the word is. This word is a noun. Language is a noun. How to use it. Um, with other words. Um, <clears throat> that that is a dead language and so on and so forth. So it gives you various um, connotations, contexts in which it's used, how to use it with a verb, idiomatic expressions that enrich the language. Here the verb is enrich. How to use the word with a noun, <clears throat> new methods of language learning, and so on and so forth. So you get the point. 
this is a very uh, useful um, website to locate a word in its uh, location in, in terms of its context. All right. Now I want to talk about different podcasts, which are very important for listening skills. Um, one of the key impediments with our teaching learning also is um, the listening of students um, um, does not develop because they're not native users of English at home. Um, now things are changing, of course, lots of people watch um, OTT, um, all that. But um, in terms of classroom experience, they do not get uh, much. And which is why good podcasts um, are um, very important. And, and also from Serials or movies one can learn only as much. Um, it's uh, literature and in terms of development of thoughts and arguments as well. So I'll tell you a few good podcasts which you can recommend your students as well as listen to them yourselves. And BBC and British um, Council has have uh, the best one of the best resources, a few of the best resources for um, podcasts. So there's something called BBC Six Minutes. Just Google BBC Six Minutes and it comes up. So as the name suggests, um, these podcasts are only six minutes long. And which is given the attention span of um, kids these days, it's very good. Um, and also, uh, it teaches students uh, how to um, deal in brevity, how to <clears throat> um, program their thoughts to be concise, to be precise, not ramble. And... Um, <clears throat> how to present a whole um, idea uh, within six minutes. And <clears throat> interesting thing is, like I said, language learning is impossible without um, serious engagement with literature, with social issues and whatever. And so these um, six minute podcasts that you have on BBC Six Minutes are very interesting. As you can see, a range of um, topics. Should we farm octopus? Mushrooms, medicines or myth? How green is your money? So, um, how how green is your money is um, a very interesting, important topic for the day when we are talking about climate change, etc. Where are money invested? Uh, where are money is coming from? Like um, um, students learning that uh, uh, that mobile phones are not completely green. That you think that. Um, um, uh, that did not involve much electricity, so not much. So if you go by simple logic, not much coal is being mined. It's electronics. It's not electric. So it should consume less electricity, means less coal, and so on and forth. But <clears throat> um, that's where these discussions begin. That in, it involves silica mining. It involves child labor in Africa, and so on and so forth. So this is about how your money is being invested. But I just gave you a, an example: ways to live for a hundred years. Saving dead languages, sounds that want you to make you scream, how fans talk about their passions, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> the right way to say sorry. So things like these, which are very good exercises for um, for class, <clears throat> what are the right ways to sorry? Um, so you can download the PDF over here. You can download audio over here as well. And as you can see, there's vocabulary exercise over here. Let's just run through um, this. Let's download the PDF also, which will be the script of the entire thing. So this is a conversation between Neil and Beth, um, where they talk about various ways of saying so sorry and what it means. So I'll not play the podcast over here because um, of lack of time. You can listen to it. But let's just go through what is written over here and that will give you a sense of how comprehensive these podcasts are. It's increasingly becoming important for public figures to apologize after making a mistake. Neil and Beth discuss different ways to say sorry and teach you some useful um, vocabulary. Why it's important to say sorry, but the uh, focus of the matter over here is um, public figures saying sorry. 
And in the recent decades, with increasing awareness and increasing um, <clears throat> awareness about history, about um, geopolitical concerns, geographic concerns, we have seen um, leaders say sorry for um, violence, for wars, for colonization, and which shows that there is a public debate about things and that leaders are accountable and they have to be accountable. So for example, in 2010, the um, Prime Minister of Australia um, apologized for what had been done to the Aboriginal people um, in, in Australia. Or, um, um, there have been um, um, several calls for uh, asking the UK to apologize for colonization in India and so on and so forth. So various public leaders have apologized for excesses that have happened in the past. But um, the podcast itself is about various uses of how we say sorry, right? And then there's a vocabulary exercise over here, as you can see, sarcastic, public figure, faux pas, again, a French term, um, which the pronunciation tool will set right. It's not fox pass, but faux pas. Fine, caveat, which is also a French word, draw under a line, and so on and so forth. And then there's a whole transcript of um, on the conversation between Beth and Neil, right? So as you can see, it's got a whole range of topics to talk about. And just in six minutes, you can read in the class, you can recommend it to your students, and so on and so forth. Then, unfortunately, we do not have a very good podcast that originates in India, so we have to rely on other English-speaking countries. There's something called the Voice of America, which is simply the VOA. So if you Google VOA podcasts, takes you over here. Podcast Voice of America. Yeah. And as you can see, there are different kinds of topics over here, as it is arts and culture, American stories, ask a teacher, um, everyday grammar, education, so on and so forth. Let's go to arts and culture, for example. Michelangelo's secret room to open for visitors, for example. Right? And so these kind of things are very important for art integrated learning, where you, in, and interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary learning, where you refer to um, different areas, different fields of knowledge um, in the English class. And they, uh, this is how students learn better usage of language as well as they have a better knowledge base about things in the world. So here's a sec the secret vault of Michael Angelo, the famous painter, and he used to paint over here. So delicate charcoal drawings that some experts have attributed to Michael Angelo are seen on the walls of the room, used to store coal until 1955 inside Florence's Medici Chapel in central Italy, and so on and so forth. Right. <clears throat> And then there's a transcript over here that visitors will be able to visit this vault and so on and so forth. There are pictures. And of course, there's the podcast over here. You just do the play button and um, listen to it. There's also options for sharing it with friends. Press the share tab. It gives you the link and you can embed it on Twitter and Facebook or copy the link and put it on Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, or whatever. Right. So we have discussed two podcasts, BBC Six Minutes, Voice of America, and there are a few more interesting ones. <clears throat> for Specifically for language learning, there's something called Listen a Minute. So you just... Again. Just will listen a minute. And the <clears throat> URL for it is listenaminute.com. So I'll write that in chat also. We'll bonde me with singing Jiva, of course. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> thanks for saying that. How can you use VOA and BBC in our e-content lessons? Isn't there any copyright issue? 
So my focus is the classroom and not really e-content. Uh, that these can be used in the classroom, that these resources can be given to the students. Also for e-content, you can use them. Uh, as long as you attribute it, it's open source, it's for everybody to use. But of course, if we are creating our own content, it has to be our own content. So we have to create our own podcast. Um, we can refer to these um, and use it for practice. But in creating our own content, we have to create our own content. Um, so listenaminute.com is very interesting. I'll write the URL. These are one minute long podcasts. <clears throat> and it's got a tremendous range of topics from A to Z. Um, <clears throat> and so these can be used for classroom discussions. You can listen to various podcasts in the class, ask students to listen to them. For example, let's look at topics, and these topics are all, all diverse topics also, as you can see. It runs from chocolate to climate change to cyberbullying. So things which would interest students, for example, climate change, let's see. <clears throat> so it's just one minute long podcast. Maybe we can hear it if Zoom supports it. But let us see. And so, so here you have the um, whole transcript of it also. Um, <clears throat> and very briefly, it covers um, the issue and opens up um, points to talk about. And then there's a gap filling blanks as well over here. All kinds of things, correct the spelling, unjumble the words. And um, points for discussion where two students can discuss student A's questions, student B's questions, and so on and so forth. So it's a very good worksheet, workbook for various kinds of things. Let's look at a couple more examples. For example, cyberbullying. And as you can see at the top, um, there's the PDF of this, a word file, quiz one and quiz two. You can look at what kind of quizzes they have. Does the text begin with A, B, or C? Click on one and see your choice written in the white box. Your score below is your answer. What comes next? The internet can be a scary place these days, especially so the sentence has been um, divided into three parts. And which part comes first is what we have to answer. Right? And so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So let's go back. Let's go back. And let's go back to cyberbullying itself and see what other things are there. Yeah. So, again, all these, um, there's correct the spelling. Internet can be acid place or scary, has to be corrected. Um, unjumble the word, the internet. These days, be scary, these can. So these are very good exercises for um, vocabulary, spellings, as well as unjumble the words. And we can make up questions for two students to discuss about this issue. Right. Doctors. Right. So you get the drift. There are also um, uh, points of discussion um, <clears throat> already given over here in some examples. Uh, we create our own discussion points between student A and B and so on and so forth. So it's a very useful resource for a very vibrant um, um, classroom, class discussion, debates, um, talking about um, uh, an issue in the class and the range, as you can see, is tremendous over here. Very good. So let's talk about a couple more podcasts and then we can move to uh, some more resources. 
So there is something called the KCRW book one. This is for students of um, higher level for um, class nine and up, <clears throat> which is author interviews and um, news and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> and but I'd highly recommend this because um, this gives students an um, idea of higher learning in literature, as well as various philosophical topics, um, historical topics. So as you can see over here, the topics like grief and loss, poetry, story of America, fantasy of bookworms, um, Nobel laureates. So all the people who have won um, Nobel in literature, it's in two parts over here. <clears throat> so there's a transcript. And there's, of course, the podcast, which is 29 minutes long. And then there's one more of BBC called Radio 4. <clears throat> Sorry, I typed BC, it's BBC. <clears throat> Right. So this also has um, a very interesting, um, <clears throat> these are longer. The other one that we saw was six minutes. It's by BBC six okay. minutes. Hola, Raju. Um, Hotel. These are longer and these have, um, um, you can see various kinds of um, topics over here. Okay. Good. So that's about uh, podcasts, these four or five, five podcasts that I showed. Another interesting tool is Quillbot. This is not a podcast, of course. Quillbot is uh, for grammar checking, for plagiarism checking, but play for plagiarism checking, you'll have to upgrade to premium. And there's a translator, citation generator, there are all kinds of um, things over here as you can see um, co-writer so you can jointly write stuff also on it if you um, put it on the cloud so and you can see there are various kinds of things in different languages and um, it's largely free one doesn't need the premium version to do most of the things on this um, <clears throat> And uh, as you can see, there are various kinds of uh, modes as well, standard, fluency, formal, academic, simple, um, we can do all kinds of things. So for example, let us write something wrong and see if it can, let's go to the grammar checking mode and, and write something absolutely wrong and see how it behaves. So let us say, Sumit was went his let's write wrong spellings also grand let's write very wrong and mother's house and let us see what this can do and This is um, so it's pointing out that Sumit was went is wrong. So make it Sumit went. Okay. Um, so it's good to go. We are still not good to go. So it's not that um, powerful. Uh, but it corrects your grammatical mistakes. Unable to fix all errors, but generally it does. Um, then there is a summarizer. So if you put in a paragraph over here, it'll summarize it for you <clears throat> and set the length short or long. So for example, let us pick up um, anything from the internet and see. Um, mm.
let's just move to the things. For example, let's say, let's talk about tennis. Don't copy paste from your what? Well, let's take anything. Where's your news? Let us copy paste this. Into our um, tool. Where did it go? Well, so, summarizer. So it will summarize it like that <clears throat> very quickly. So this is um, <clears throat> this is not really a. Um, classroom tool, but this is more um, in terms of um, writing essays online or summarizing things online and so on and so forth. But as you can see, the possibilities with this uh, website are tremendous. It can do a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> the paraphraser tool is very good. If um, there is uh, long chunks of quotes, it can paraphrase it, or it can check the grammar. And Grammarly is a paid tool, so uh, this is very good. It's it's a free tool. Okay. Now for speaking skills, there is something called ESLDiscussions.com, which I'll also write in the chat box. I can't write. All right, I can't see that, but um, ESLDiscussions.com has a range of topics. Uh, no, we just discussed ESLDiscussions.com, sorry. And there's a very interesting website called yarn.co. This is a fun website for um, whatever phrases, idioms that we use, um, we type in. And uh, the website shows all the movies, all the TV serials where this has been used in three second, two second clips, um, how exactly it's been used. And it's good, it's a fun way for students to learn um, how to use a particular idiom um, in context. So, for example, a stitch in time saves life. means that if you repair something while there's time, you can save. Um, and, so for example, here, this three second video. It's so that it's right? All right. So that's a lot of things and we are nearly an hour into the session. There are more, but I'll leave you with these. And if there's any other, anything that you would uh, like to discuss. There's a question on all one minute podcast followed by activity. Yes. In that uh, ESL discussion forum, all of them are followed by activities. So if there's any questions that you would like to ask, anything you'd um, uh, like to discuss or share, most welcome. I'll stop it over here.